Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Wednesday, which means it's time for a brand new series to start. This one, uh, I'm not totally sure what to call it. Um, basically, what the point is, is that I'm doing sound design requests every week on, a, on Wednesday. And what's going to happen is that um, I'm going to share the sound, and then the top-rated comment in the comment section is going to be next week's uh, sound design request. So this week is a Stephen Walking sound. The original will be linked in the description. And uh, this is what I got. All right. Um, so there's, there are probably a number of ways you actually get the sound without doing what I did, but I decided to do what I did because I like doing what I did. Um, this one, I, I use Citrus. You could probably do this with FM8. Actually, to do precisely what I did with Citrus and FM8 would be kind of difficult, but um, I'll explain in a second how this works. So... Um, this is this this uses this is a bit of everything in Citrus. There's a bit of um, FM going on. There's a little bit of RM going on, which I I, I don't know how you do that in FM8. And then I also have a filter and uh, some wave shaping. A lot of this a lot of this is optional. Um, I also got a little bit of reverb going on in the effects section. I'm automating it as you see here. But um, what's kind of interesting about the sound and its usage usage in the song is that. Uh, when the notes are being played, they're pretty much universally that automation. So I actually didn't need to do automation. What I could have done is I could have gone into the the, the bits that I automated, which, you know, this one is uh, the mod X and the mod. I could have gone the envelope and just screwed all this and uh, just made a uh, that. This is apparently too slow. I also need to put on all the other stuff like the filters and uh, the RM and all this jazz. But uh, that's an option that's available to you. It's sort of like how using the performer in Massive or um, the uh, envelopes in FM8. However, I typically like to, my, for my personal uh Workflow, I typically like to just to do automation. That's just what's up with that. That's all there is to it. So what threw me about this sound was that I, I could have sworn it was pretty much a, a main FM sound, and it is, but um, the thing on top of it is that there's a low-pass filter happening on all of it. And that's what's giving that sort of wham wham kind of like, it's a sharp resonance is what's, is what's causing it. I got a big resonance here. Yeah, pretty much just a normal low pass filter on top of it. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, but the actual FM portion is very slight. Um, what I did here is I, I FM'd it with a single oscillator, but only a little bit. And, you know, direction doesn't particularly matter. It's just like, this is this is positive, this is negative, and I, I just like doing negative. But that's, that's, what, that, that's what that is. So over here, though, so, okay... Um, I've been getting into doing this lately, and if because this is because I I preview sounds by hitting the keyboard, like the actual typing keyboard, and doing that, uh, the lowest note I could play is C four, I think. Let's yeah, C four, and um, normally uh this actual bass note would be C one, like if I wanted that to be the real bass note. Of course, the um key. The tonic key in the track, the Stephen Walking track, is G sharp, which is really high, but that's um what uh, I did here. So in order to uh, make this work for me, what I did is I actually took the, the output oscillator, which is oscillator 1, I brought it down to 0.25, which brings it down two octaves. Because um, actually it brings it down four octaves, I think. Let's see. So default is two. So one octave is one, down to one. Two octaves would be down to 0.5, and three octaves would be down to 0.25. So yes, it's down. It's down. Um, point. It's down three octaves. I pitched it down three octaves, but it's, I did so with the ratio setting because the way that the way the ratio works is that double the current ratio is above an octave, and half the current ratio is down an octave. That's how that works. But um, the second the second uh, operator, operator two, is actually still at is still at pitch ratio two, so the default ratio, and this is because it's a high harmonic. Um, the reason why this works is because there's no low harmonic. It's also a sine wave, so it's very smooth sounding. Um, and then this particular configuration that I arrived at with the uh, oscillator tab here, the add, adding in additional harmonics, which is a thing you can do, 
um, was just dicking around until I found something that, that sounded kind of close to the original. <laughs> That's pretty much what's up with that. I just messed around until I found something that works. That's kind of how most of this works for me usually. Now the FM thing, the reason I did this is this is um this is an oscillator that's actually at the fundamental speed, which is the minus three octaves point, and it's FMing. Well, it's RMing really. The it's ring it's applying ring among blah, it's applying ring modulation to operator two, and it's doing that because it's it's introducing um fund uh, a sort of a sort of distortion of the sound that makes it sound like the tone the fundamental tone again because we can hear the bass like we can we can hear this like the sub frequency in the sound that's identifying it as a bass however if you listen to Stephen walking track it's kind of hard to place where the the note is and the sub is is because of the way it's mixed and so to make this make it more apparent about what note it is we apply a little bit of ring modulation at the fundamental tone which makes the high harmonics a high harmonic uh, aspect of the sound still sound like it's that tone. Again, it's a sine wave, so it's a bit, a bit, a bit of a smooth modulation. And I, I, I messed with the phase start position just a tiny bit just because I thought it sounded cool. That's pretty much all there was to that. Um, as you see here, I have this oscillator disabled because normally when I make an FM sound, what I do is I engage oscillator six out as a sine wave, just a sine wave. And then I uh, modulate the volume to follow the increase of FM. Because usually when a sound is increased all the way up to maximum FM, it loses its sine wave um, aspect. However, there's not this particular FM isn't harsh enough to the point where the sine wave goes away entirely. So the, the bass is still present. <laughs> Um, in the effects, uh, like I said earlier, I routed it into FX1, which is, again, the the effects routing is the same as the uh, operator routing. You use the matrix routing, which is kind of cool in, in, in uh, Citrus. So I routed it to FX1, and um, I turned on the wave shaper. So this is just a really basic wave shaper. And this, this, is, this part is optional. Like, it doesn't necessarily need to have this. I just think it sounds better, personally, like that. Um, the mix, however, what I'm doing here is, is that uh, I'm actually increasing the distortion as it approaches the high harmonic. And this is because I don't want the distortion on the low end of it, which is mostly just a sine wave. I want the sine wave to stay pure, at least mostly pure kind of thing. So the mix changes. That's what that does. This is what this, and this is a double curve shape. You right click, you right click a point, change the double curve, and you get this sort of coolness going on. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I did the same thing with the filter, only this has a straight line. Now the filter is just low pass. You right click this, you get your list of filters and you can also just scroll through it, kind of deal. And uh, low pass one, just normal low pass with the X1 uh, cut in the center and the resonance is kind of high. So that's where that particular, particular uh, change to the timbre of the sound comes from, is from the low pass filter on top of everything, on top of, the FM is actually not on top of the wave shaper because that goes into the wave shaper because that's how it's routed. And then in effects, I have reverb engaged. And you can do that with like any normal reverb thing you like. I just wanted to keep it all in the same, in the same patch just because I thought, you know, being unified is cool. I like that. So yes, that's a, uh, more or less entirely what the sound's about. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know. And like I said in the beginning of the video, the top rated comment uh, will be the sound design request for next week, that is next Wednesday, because this is a new series. I can't think of a name for the series. I could just call it sound design request or something, but that's dumb. Um, I'll think of something before I upload it, and then the title will be what it, what it is. I don't know what it is yet because I haven't done it yet, because that's in the future, and I'm in the past. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about anything I just said, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.